Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be talking about circuits, enhancements, and calibrations for you in Crystal of Atlan. Circuits are going to be the one that we talk about first as this is the thing you're going to be able to interact with most frequently given the large quantity of circuits that you get as drops overall just from doing content in general. Now from your gear page you'll see on the left side there is a second circuit option in between gear and outfits. On this page you are going to see all of your circuits on the right side. Now, these are just the circuits that are associated to the gear slot that you have selected. Some circuits are used for the same gear slots. However, other gear pieces may use different circuit types. And so you're actually going to have a lot of different circuits to be able to work with. So don't worry too much about that there. Circuits are something that should always be slotted into your equipment at all times. They are not like insignias. Insignias are something that you essentially fuse to the piece of equipment and then are not able to take off of it uh, without using some other item. However, circuits are things that you just simply socket into the piece of equipment and then you can take it out. They're kind of like gems in that regard. You just put them in and out for additional stat gains at no cost. There's no cost to insert them, no cost to take them out. Nothing whatsoever, it's just additional stats that you can put on your equipment, so there's no reason to not have them there. Now circuits, what type of stats can they offer you? Well these ones specifically that we're seeing here for the weapon, these ones all have a main attribute of attack. They are all attack, and they will only be attack at this time, right? However, for some pieces, these main attribute stats can vary. So these ones are attack speed, but these ones are now crit rate. And then these ones are cr uh, crit damage and cooldown reduction. Uh, more attack speed, crit damage, crit rate, attack speed. So there's all sorts of different main attributes that can be for some pieces. However, others are just always the same thing. Base HP, base HP, base HP, base HP, base HP, and so on. These ones are always base HP. The same way these ones were always plus attack. So some you have to look at a little bit more to see in terms of min-maxing what attribute, uh, main attribute you're going with. Others are just very clear cut and dry. This is their main attribute and then you don't worry about it. The part where it gets long-term investment into your circuits is the unlocking of the sub attributes because the sub attributes are completely random in terms of what they can roll. So at levels two, four, six, and eight, if I upgraded the circuit, we would get new sub attributes. So we're going to go here to level it up for leveling up your circuits. You can go one of two ways with it. You can either use the circuit materials that you get from dismantling things, dismantling circuits, dismantling uh, rewards, or uh, just as drops in general. Or you can use other circuits themselves, which you're going to have lots of pink, purple, and blue circuits that you can feed as XP if you so desire. So we're going to upgrade this piece right here. We're going to see that it's going to go to level 2. It's going to add a new attribute, and the attack is going to go up to plus 12 from plus 10. So we upgrade that. Boom. And it gave us melee defense. Okay? So if we want to just quickly do this, we'll go to level up this one, and we will feed it. That old level two one, uh, this one is actually going to give us, because it's another same level uh, circuit, we're actually getting a little more XP on this, uh, and it's going to go to level three. And so this time we got physique. So the attribute is completely random for that sub attribute in terms of what it can roll. And it can roll pretty much all the stat types. It can roll damage type increases. It can roll uh, primary stat strength, dex, uh, you know, as we can see here, agility, sorry, not dexterity, agility, uh, cooldown rate, attack speed, crit, you know, these sub attributes have a wide range of what they can be. So this is where that RNG is a little bit as well for using it, but these are all just extra stats. Uh, it's just a nice way to get some extra stats to try and optimize your class's performance. Uh, you know, you're probably going to want to aim to try and get two out of four stats that you like here early on in things but you know obviously long term if you end up playing this game for a long time uh you're gonna want to aim for three out of four and then obviously perfect case scenario four out of four 
but uh you know this is just a nice way to get some raw stats you can upgrade these um uh, you just keep leveling these up and it's going to just give you more in these situation more just raw attack which is great in that sense right so that's definitely something uh, that you should do so you know put your circuits in your equipment it's worth it all right now enhancing for those who are not quite sure how enhancing works um, it might seem a little confusing to some but it is straightforward when you go to enhancement here, um, there is going to be success rates that you'll see here on the bottom side. There's materials that you can use to increase your chances uh, with enhancing. And then you obviously have uh, the ability to feed, you know, prior equipment for inheritance uh, that will just, you know, transfer it over. So, you know, we talked about in how in gear inheritance works um, from one grade down. So this rare shadow void piece uh is able to be inherited into a epic flaming headpiece and that does so at the cost of the gear piece and one enhancement level but then i don't have to use materials to enhance from one to three if this is more impactful if you have stuff that is enhanced higher up but outside of the gear pieces we also have the vouchers all right now the important things to really note about these vouchers and what they are with the plus 12 the plus 13 uh the chances of it being plus 13 stuff like that why plus 13 and plus 12 are so important to be able to get and why you should you know really you know think clearly about which ones you're using them on um your enhancing chances go down the higher your enhancements go up you cannot from enhancing levels plus one to plus 11 it will not go down Starting at plus 11, when you fail, if so from enhancement level 11 to 12, if you fail, it can go back down an enhancement level. And it works that way until enhancement 15. So many people haven't clicked on it, but there is a full breakdown of the enhancement system here in the top corner. If you click that icon, it tells you you can quickly enhance gear up to plus 10 directly from your inventory. Um, for anything beyond level 10, you have to go to Glenn. All right, uh, enhancement can go up to plus 25 for rare and epic quality gear. Uh, everything else is capped out at plus 15. From one to 11, there is no penalty if an enhancement fails. From 11 to 15, a failed enhancement will reduce the enhancement level by one. After 15, gear needs to be fully amplified via amplification before you can continue enhancing it. When the enhancement succeeds, the initial amplification progress on the new enhancement level will be randomized. When enhancement fails, all amplification progress at the current level will be cleared, but it will not downgrade. So once you get to plus 15, the gear won't downgrade anymore, okay? And they actually incorporate a fail-safe system for you beginning at plus 15. And so starting at plus 15, they have a table here for you, your current enhancement uh, level is plus 15 attempt one 18 percent chance for it to succeed and second attempt 22 26 30 40 50 100 percent it is the same way all the way down it is seven attempts all the way through so even though the enhancement chance goes down for those first uh second and you know third attempts and everything as it goes down everything goes down the Sixth and seventh attempts are always 50 and 100%. So seven attempts is the maximum amount of attempts per enhancement level. It is capped at that uh, no matter what. So it's not, you know, it's it's deterministic RNG in that sense. It's still going to feel bad to pity your progress in that regard because, you know, that's just more materials and resources that you had to use to do this but it's guaranteed for you to get there. You really just got to get to that plus 15 system. That's the important stuff regarding enhancing. One to 11, failures don't downgrade. 11 to 15, failures do downgrade. 15 to 25, they don't downgrade, but you have to go through amplification and potentially a pity process, which is seven attempts uh, on that in order for you to hit it in terms of the percentages for how that pity system works all right so that's the really important stuff there regarding the enhancing now calibration 
this is the one that I recommend people hold off on using uh, for the most part until they are working on their end game equipment. All right, the reason for this you, calibration watches, you might think that 167 is a lot. Okay, let's talk about the two different types of calibration watches. The normal watches, we got 167 here. All attributes will be randomized, okay? And it tells you during calibration, each stat will be rolled at random with equal chance within these ranges. So our strength, if we use it right now, could either go down two or up 10. Great, fantastic. That's nice to see. But it randomizes everything. And stuff could just all go down. So we're going to calibrate it one time to show you. And in this situation, everything went up. That's a great calibration, right? But that's still only, even looking at this, that's still only 66% performance for this piece. So the question is, do you want to keep messing with this to try and get higher percentages? How much of a difference will, you know, another five strength, another five physique, agility make for you overall? Uh, and remember you're doing this with like all your equipment, you know, so maybe something that's at like 18%, you know, you can, you know, throw a couple calibrations at it to try and get it to a higher overall performance level like this. So it's like, okay, it's at 58%. Great. Um, your advanced watches, these are the ones that you have so few of. These are the ones that are very rare and it is a random attribute will definitely increase but it's random. It could, I could use this one and it increases my intellect. I don't want my intellect to be what goes up. I would want my strength to be what goes up, but it would also be really lame that, you know, the most amount that my strength could go up from this point is basically one, right? So it's just like the range of increase here is one for me. So that's not, a huge gain overall uh, and there's going to be chances for you to still get drops of these pieces of equipment again so when a piece of gear drops it's going to have a random calibration percent of its effective stats so if you've ever wondered that when you look at the piece of equipment and you see right here where it says main attributes 62 percent that's your calibration effectiveness level of these attribute stats. Uh, you might actually have a high calibration level of your preferred stat, or you could have a high calibration of a stat you don't care about or isn't your main stat. Um, and then you could have a low calibration of your defense or a mid calibration of your primary stat like we see here, right? So we could calibrate it here. And now the piece is technically worse overall. It's lower performance, but we, so we went down in our physique and our intellect, but we went up in our strength and our physical defense. Cool. Um, so we're just going to hit this a couple times to try and get it back to being a little more well-rounded of a piece. Uh, and right now, as you can see, it's a little scuffy, but that's going to be a good spot for it to be 53% for us with our strength being up on the primary for it. Um, so we're going to go with that right now uh, for where that chest piece is overall. And so you can go through these compasses, these calibration compasses really quickly, just dumping them over and over and over. But again, uh, you know, we still have lots of time to get duplicate drops from the content. You still have chances to get repeat pieces that could have a higher base calibration than what you currently have. I recommend at least at the very least, uh, definitely not using any of your advanced, but you know, holding on to some of your regular calibration watches for when we are getting into making our, uh, you know, bigger, longer term pieces of gear. The ones that have either massive shard requirements like the Celestius that needs 2000 shards. And then we upgrade that into the equipment that comes from hex chess. Hex chess has a lot of specific materials that you need, you're not gonna be getting duplicates of these pieces of gear on a regular basis. These are long-term acquisitional pieces of equipment. These are gonna be where you're gonna wanna sync your calibrations into in order to min-max the attributes of this equipment because you're just not gonna get 
other you're, you're just not going to be getting duplicates of these on a regular basis like you would be uh these armor pieces these armor pieces are going to drop for you just by doing purgatory you're going to do purgatory every day so every day you have a chance to get a duplicate uh of that piece of gear that could have a higher calibration rate if you will okay um and you know we have it here as an example this necklet twilight pendant i've gotten two twilight pendants as you can see but one of them has a higher calibration level than the other one. Um, you know, and this one, you know, it has more M def, but it's lower on all the other attributes. And so I'm wearing this one instead. So don't, you know, be too quick to use your calibration compasses on equipment that is also very easily replaced on a drop basis. All right. So. Uh, but calibration is just a way for you to try to squeeze out the, you know, absolute littlest bit of increase to your equipment to min-max it as much as possible, your, your min-max, your output. Uh, but I recommend holding on to them until you are getting those long-term investment pieces uh, overall. But, you know, mess around with it a little bit. You know, if you have stuff that's like really low calibration roll... You know, use a compass, raise it up to that 40-50% range, or at least to a primary stat being on the high value side of what you'd like. But that's going to wrap up uh, going over the circuits, enhancements, and calibrations for you all. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe. And if you have anything you want to ask us, you can find us live on Twitch at twitch.tv. Take care and have a good one.